player 2 has joined the game. Hey yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 327 of the Two Player Co-op Podcast. As always, I'm one of your hosts here, Kevin, along with my brother from my mother, Sean. How are we doing? Fantastic. We are remote today, but that's okay. We're going to do it anyway. What do you say? Yeah, I say that this podcast, this podcast is brought to you by Derek Bamford, in case broadcast. you didn't know. Yeah, podcast. And also, in case you didn't know, this is the two-player co-op podcast. We're just about every week, two brothers get together to tell you everything you need to know about in the world of video games. And sometimes they hit the mic stand. If you like that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends, family, and everyone in B. Twix. If you only listen on audio services, that's cool too. Just give us, a, give us a, I can't read and talk at the same time. Give us a five-star review, thumbs up or whatever your service allows. Also, if you really like us, you can go to patreon.com slash two player co-op where we got a lot of different tiers, but the most popular is the producer tier for $5, which lets us, which lets you watch us record the podcast live on YouTube. You get a bonus episode every month and you get the podcast live one day early. If you miss the live recording. Some of our patrons deserve shout outs, just like our patron saints, the aforementioned Derek Bamford, as well as John Tingley, who has a bar named after him. Also, our affiliates, James Solar, make sure you check out James Games and more on YouTube, Sarah Solar and Mom. Also, our producers, Steve Appleton, Aunt Sue, Dustin Downs and Chris Peralta. Make sure you check out PS Rewind on YouTube as well. If you do like cool t-shirts and the like, you can always go to teespring.com slash stores slash two player co-op. We are remote today. Like I said, that is because we planned on recording last night. However, uh, Sunday night, we had some crazy storms roll through Memphis and I was without power for 24 hours, which is not fun. Um, so we got power on just before we were planning to record, but it had been such a stressful day that I was just not. Not ready for it. So we're doing it remote today. No big deal. We got a lot to talk about. Um, I also closed the garage door on my foot, which was interesting. Um, so it's been a few days, but I got a new garage door now unrelated to the foot injury. Um, and my oven works again. So that's nice. Um, so it was big, a good big changes. Yeah. It was a good adult day. Good adulting day. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything else to talk about. Sean, you got anything fun or any banter that might be considered witty or you want to just get right into it? I want to talk about public restroom etiquette. Okay. Um, I feel like there's an unspoken rule that is not always followed. What's up, Derek? Um. Here's what I don't like. Yo, yo, yo. If I'm in the bathroom, yes. if I'm in the stall and I'm doing my business, and then there's somebody else in another stall doing their business. Holy crap. John Tingley murdered a scorpion this morning. That is awesome. So, we should call him Sub-Zero. Um, Man, that was good. Uh, I'm stall, in the stall doing my yeah. business. Other Just guys pooping. You know how I his do. stall doing his business. I don't want to know who that person is, and oh, I don't God. want them to know who I am. It drives me <clears throat> nuts. Look, it's easy to tell when somebody's getting toilet paper. You can you can hear it. It's not a quiet endeavor. You can hear nobody's like secret. Like it's obvious when you're done. When I'm finishing up and I'm wiping, you have lost your opportunity to leave the bathroom until I leave. You mm -hmm. got to let me finish, get out, wash my hands and leave before you emerge your yeah. exodus as I would do for you. There's nothing worse than like, I'm blushing and I'm pulling my pants up, whatever. And now the other guy starts wiping his butt and he's doing his stuff. I'm like, come on. Cause now I feel like I got to hurry up and like, get out. I'm like, I don't want, there's a lot of noises going on in there. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to know what noises were coming from what people. I don't want to know who that was. I don't want you to know who I am. It drives me nuts, and I just had to get that off my chest. Also, if you, depending on the situation with the stall, if you can see the shoes of the person next to you, and then you're like, oh, God, that's Bob. 
That's Bob. <laughs> Bob's Bob's dropping a big deuce. My 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 question is this: What is your what are your thoughts on farting at the urinal? Um, I wouldn't do it if there was somebody else at an adjacent or even at if it was a real big bathroom, like at a, a an arena or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let one rip. That's fine. But if you're like next to me or even like a few urinals away, I'm not going to do that. See, I think and that's I ridiculous. Don't think they should do it to me. I think that's ridiculous. We're in the bathroom. If we cannot be ourselves in the bathroom, we are no greater than the ants and the scorpions. Like if you got but a if fart, you were, if you were standing three feet away from somebody, just out in the hallway, you wouldn't just. The hallway's not a bathroom. You're in the bathroom where, like you said, all kinds of sounds and everything are occurring on a second by second. Okay, basis. but it's more about the proximity to another person. If you were alone in the hallway, you would fart. I would try to keep it silent, but yes. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with farting <clears throat> in or outside of the bathroom. I think it comes down to is there another person within earshot of your butt shot? Well, it's probably more if they're within smell shot, but <laughs> cause that's that's probably worse. But I don't okay. have a problem with it. The other thing I don't like, conversations in the bathroom. No. If and you're on I the mean, phone in the bathroom, what is wrong with you? I've had people in the stall next to me taking just full-on conversations. I'm like, who are you talking to that this couldn't wait? Another thing I don't like, if I'm at the urinal, don't come next to me and start talking hey, hey sean how's it going what'd you think of that blah 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 i'm just no. like no you look let's, straight let's ahead let's at least wait until yes. we're washing hands or something then i'm willing to engage in conversation but yeah no you look straight ahead you pee then you go wash your hands if you want to talk there hey man how's it going that's fine we do not talk at the urinal someone brought in a squatty potty to my work <laughs> that is awesome i have a squatty potty I'm all for the squatty potty, but it's funny to bring one into the. That's awesome. Restaurant. That that's awesome. Just like, hey man, I'm I'm just I'm I'm taking one for the team. I thought this would help us all out. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, okay. I guess that makes more sense. I thought I read it as like he had his own personal squatty potty that he takes to and from the restroom with him. Like he if keeps it's... it at his desk and then he lugs it to the bathroom. Well, then people they they know what you're going in there for. <laughs> if you're doing that, there's no question what you're going in there for. <laughs> Unless you're like, I don't know, something might happen. I'm going to sit down because you never know. Um, that's that. If it's that, that would be freaking amazing. God, I need a haircut. <laughs> it has been forever. Oh, puffy hair. We're going to talk about hair here in a little bit. Um, Sean, besides yeah. the big one, let's knock these out first. How goes Dark Souls for you? Um, I'm on my second playthrough. I did not get to complete the platinum before final fantasy. Like I knew I wouldn't. Um, I think I'm on the right track. I don't think I've screwed anything up yet. Um, I thought there was only one thing you had to do in your third playthrough, but now it seems like there's two things and they're both kind of related and it doesn't really change a whole lot, but um. I don't know. It's it's my issue is that by the time I'm done with Final Fantasy, am I going to remember where I was at in Dark Souls? Right. Both in just the playthrough and like the trophy getting thing. Like I'm not even going to remember where I'm supposed to go next in the game, let alone what was I working on trophy wise and what. Do I, so it's going to be a nightmare. But um, yeah, I had to back burner it for now. So how, because I don't think you had beat it last week, had you? Um, I think maybe I beat it right before I came over or something. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, Final boss was tough. He's like all over the place. By far the hardest boss. Well, I finally got to fight some... Uh, What's the word? We're infamous. Some infamous bosses that I had heard mm. about a lot from Dark Souls, but never having actually played the first one, didn't really know much about him. Right. Uh, Ornstein and Smau, Smo, Smaug, I don't know how you say his name. Um, they're tough. Uh, Chaos Bed 
it's this weird one where you just have to go over here and hit this thing and then go over here and hit this thing and then go in the middle and hit this thing and you beat it. But after you hit that first thing, like the floor starts collapsing and it's like this big tree thing and it's like swiping at you and like it hits you and you just, you fall off and you die. And I died probably 10 times in him and I probably died only five times. Well, that's not true. I probably died as many times to him as I died elsewhere combined. Um, the final boss was pretty tough. Um, but no, I beat it. It is very much, I'm not sure that it's a better game than Demon Souls. Now, I would probably think it was better if I played the original Demon Souls. I mean, I'm yeah. comparing it to remastered remake, or remake, yeah. whatever. But three is better, Bloodborne is better, Elden Ring is definitely better, Demon Souls remake is better, but it's it's still a very good game. You kind of know exactly what you're getting, but it was very much a... You can tell it's the first one. There's a lot yeah. of stuff they didn't really have down yet. Um, but I like it. Um, I'm going to try to get that platinum, but we'll see what happens. James, what's up, dude? What's up, James? That's kind of how I feel about Jedi Survivor. I'm like, man, I was really going to get that platinum. And then Zelda came out, and now Final Fantasy is here. And I'm like, I don't know that I'm going to go back. You it's kind of like what still have to go back to Horizon. Yeah, you have to go back no, to Ghost. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. <laughs> no. Um. So you played anything else besides the big one? That was it. Okay. So I did start because it's on PS Plus uh, Extra. Just came out on PlayStation. I started Rogue Legacy Two. I've only played it for a couple hours. Um. I had never really played any Rogue Lights or Rogue Likes or just Rogues. I mean, this is Rogue. Uh. I mean, it's not Rogue, but it's Rogue Legacy. You know what I mean. Um, and I really like it. It's hard. Um, the art style is really nice. The music's really good. At first when I started okay. playing. Yeah. So this is like the rogue game, no. correct? No, no. There was a game that was just called rogue forever. Is ago. this at all related is this like no. a sequel or like a spinoff? It has nothing to do with it. Right. It would be like if you made okay. a Metroidvania game and called it Vania Legacy or something like that is what I get. Okay. So it's it's still a roguelite or roguelike or whatever. One, one of the two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, But I really like it. Like I said, it's difficult. It. It's one of the it, it the rooms change. The, the layout of the castle changes every time you play it. Um. I, at first I was having trouble like with the, the hit boxes on it. Like I would try to jump and attack an enemy, but like, I wouldn't be judging. It's like, I would get too close when I didn't think I was too close. And like, right before I would swing my sword to hit it, it would hit me and knock me back. I'm like, what the hell? So that just took some, took a little bit of getting used to. Um, but there is stuff that you unlock like every run, you're trying to get gold, which you can use to buy permanent upgrades and unlock new characters and stuff between runs. Um, there is like, I think there's like 75 different classes of characters in this. It is insane. At first, I was just using the regular knight guy. And every time you die, the whole legacy thing is you die. And then one of your offspring is who you play as next. So you can actually go back through and see how many times you died. Like you can see your family tree and everything is pretty cool. Um, but you get, there's, like I said, 75 classes or something like that. You unlock them as you go, but every time you die, you only get to pick one class out of three. So I was getting used to the night. I wasn't doing anything else. And then I got to the point where it's like, well, you can't be a knight this time. And I was like, well, crap. Um, so I picked a Valkyrie, which I liked. I think that's my favorite. I tried being like a mage who just, you shoot magic and stuff. And it was, I didn't like that much. There's archers. Um, there's wait, a, so it every time you start new, it gives you like there's only like three classes that you get to choose from, correct? And they're random, so you need to luck out that the one you like is exactly you. Yep, okay. Um, but like I've unlocked some stuff, like I can talk, you walk around at first, and there's these like floating eyeballs, and you go to interact with it, and it says you hear whispers, you know, something, something, but you can't make out what they say. I'm like, okay. So then you get an upgrade to that. And basically it's like souls in the castle that are telling you background on the story and stuff like that. And then I got another upgrade on one run and these last forever, but I got another upgrade that lets, um, you can dash in the game. 
the the only thing I didn't like at first, there's no double jump, and it felt like the movement in this was not great. But then I unlocked the air dash, so you can jump and then you can dash in the air. Obviously, that's what it means, um, and that works really well. That I was like, okay, now this feels better. But man, this game is so hard. Um, I've only gotten to the first boss because I found the first boss door before I got the air dash upgrade. And there's these two mm-hmm. candles. There, there's a candle on each side of the door. And if you jump and attack, you kind of do like a, could you do it in bad boy? I can't remember, but like messenger and stuff, you know how you would jump and attack and it would, you'd jump up off of whatever you were hitting. Yeah. If you jump and do that on these candles, it lights the candle, but then you got to light the other one. However, by the time you hit that and go back over, you can't light them both at the same time until you unlock the air dash. And then you jump up, hit it, dash, hit it, boom. Then the boss door opens. And um, I have not beaten the boss. I've gotten my butt kicked. Uh, I've gotten to, I got him down to about a third of health. But again, I've only played this for like two hours. And some of the runs I was just doing horribly. I was like, I'm not getting any gold. I'm not, I'm just, just whatever. Kill me. I don't care. I'm going to start over. Um, But it's really fun. I think I'll go back to it after Final Fantasy, I think. I don't know for sure, but it's definitely something you should try out. I, I could see you getting the friggin' platinum just because you're better at games than I am. Um, but it's really it's good. definitely on my list. It's gonna be after Final Fantasy and after I go back and clean up Dark Souls, but it'll that's what's next on my list, I would say. Sean's quieter than Kevin. Let me Yeah, I turned it up a little bit and I'm trying to be closer to the mic. Okay. I, I turned it up on my side a little bit too. Uh, might not be in long. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, here we go. Rogue was a game that used ASCII characters. It, by the way, do you say ASCII or a- how, how do you say that? It's ASCII. Right? I think it's I think it's ASCII. ASCII. The the key to your ass is the game's <laughs> graphics. It was a top down view. I might not be in too long. Been having internet issues. Ugh. I beat the messenger. Not sure if I told you all that. The Messenger's freaking awesome, James. I love that game. I bought it twice. I bought it on Switch when it came out, and then I bought it again on PlayStation and got the Platinum. That game is amazing. Freaking awesome. And that's why I see a Stars is going to be awesome. I might actually play an RPG, but we'll talk about that also here in a little bit. Um, but anyways, that's Rogue Legacy 2. Sean. Yeah. Speaking of RPGs, no spoilers. The Final Fantasy 16 is here. It's an 88 on Metacritic about what I thought it would end up being. I actually thought it might hit 90, um, but it's here. I've played it for about 10 hours, I think. Sean, I don't even know where you're at now. I've got, we, we've got friends vis- visiting for the week. And like I said, I was without power for 24 hours. So I've not been able to play it as much as I would have liked. Um, not, I, 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 I've got friends here. I'd rather have them here than play Final Fantasy, but you know what I mean. Um, how How far are you into it, Sean? And what are some of your overall thoughts? Because I think I, I got a lot to say about this game. Um, as we speak, I am in the midst of the final boss. What the heck? You, you're in the midst of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to beat it before we started recording, and it just kept going on and on and on. I feel like I'm in like the last phase of it or whatever, but I'm like, All right, I just I had to pause it. Now I'm recording. I'm going to go beat it after this. I would guess I've probably had another 10, 15 minutes left of the fight, maybe. And then probably like 30 minutes of ending and whatever. Gonna, but I, I could see this game having like a Metal Gear Solid 4 ending where it's like 90 minutes of cutscenes. It's going to be very long, I think. So how many um, hours in are you? 35. Jesus. But I did... So I th- am pretty sure I did every side quest oh i haven't done any i haven't done Um, any. a lot of them what you've probably read online so if you're serious about going for the platform the The platform yeah the platinum (laughs) the platinum do every side quest (laughs) the witness um if you're not that's awesome james (laughs) yeah um if you're not going for the platinum you probably just do the side quests that have the plus symbol, not the exclamation mark, exclamation point, exclamation mark or exclamation. Point? It's a point. It's a point. Exclamation point. Um, the ones with the pluses actually give you like nothing necessary, but good 
things that will really help you. The other ones are just for like experience and gold and this other kind of currency that I don't think you've even gotten to yet that is necessary for the platinum. Um, is it one of the three things that's on like the result screen? It's a fourth one that shows oh, up. Okay. Yeah. Cause I still don't even know what's on there. It's, it's experience, it's, it's gill. Experience, and what's the one in the middle? It's your um, ability points or whatever. Oh, to like duh. Unlock okay. yeah, and yeah, upgrade yeah, yeah. your, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much at the end of the game. I feel like I've done just about everything. I did all, well, I, I almost said something that I shouldn't because you're not there yet. And I don't want to spoil anything. Um, I'm pretty sure I read that once you beat it, you get to just kind of keep going and it doesn't automatically kick you to new game plus like dark souls and stuff so yeah i saw um it was shrier i still haven't or somebody said I that the end game even, stuff is like the most fun. oh no it was the completionist that like the end game stuff they're having so much fun that he was having so much fun with it uh so there's like new stuff to do i guess or is he yeah. just saying going back and okay um yeah i i love it um i would be hard pressed to spoil anything for you if i wanted to because i still don't really feel like i know what's going on i'm gonna need to go and like watch a whole youtube video that just kind of breaks everything down um it's very convoluted or i'm just stupid i don't know one or the other or maybe both um, well I, what i've seen people saying is that without anything specific what i'm not going to say anything specific but neither would they but they said i saw somebody on some reddit thread or something was like whatever questions you have eventually it's all going to make perfect sense i'm like well okay because like the stuff i was texting you i'm like i'm i'm so confused i don't i don't not confused so, so, but i just don't know how some certain things are happening i guess yeah if there was if i wanted to tell you what's going on from a high level i probably could yeah but like unless there's still stuff that gets answered in like the ending I still have questions of like, why did this happen? And what was meant by this? And why did this guy do this? And like all these kinds of things that I'm like, I feel like if they were going to be answered, either they would have been by now or they were, and I'm just stupid and I don't understand it still. Um, from a high level, I understand what's going on, but it's it's crazy. So... I guess I would sum up Final Fantasy 16 like this. The way I look at it is Square Enix made a Final Fantasy game for me. But I wonder what people that are hardcore Final Fantasy fans, if it's a Final Fantasy for them. Does that make sense? Because yeah, and it's... I'm not going to... I've seen a lot of discourse online of like, oh, this isn't a real Final Fantasy game. Shut up. But this game looks like Final Fantasy. The story is very Final Fantasy. It sounds Final Fantasy. Like, all in all, it's Final Fantasy. Just not in, like, the gameplay combat side of things. Um which is obviously a big thing, but aside from that, it's very much still Final Fantasy. I love this game. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I could play it more. I'm thinking about it a lot. Not as much as I was Tears of the Kingdom, but I'm really liking it. I think the combat's awesome. I love the new... You get different powers as you go um the last one i got was actually really sad um the story like i said i i love the story but i have no idea like i was texting sean these questions like why how is this and what is this and now this is happening and he's like just just it'll make sense it'll make sense it'll make sense i'm like okay well part okay. of my issue is like there's like san breck there's rosaria there's Don Walu. There's like all these different yeah. like nations uh, or something. Nations, yeah. But then it's like they also call them like different things, like 
what is the empire doing here? I'm like, well, which one's the empire? Does that mean, is that Sanbrek? Is that Walud? Is that Dalmechia? Is that Rosaria? Is that, I'm like, who is, is the that the empire? holy city? And then, like, yeah. They'll call it like the empire. And then the, I mean, it sounds like Star Wars. There's, there's right. the empire. There's the Republic. I'm like, why just call these things the name of their nation. So I know who you're talking to. Um, so things like that still kind of mess me up. And then like, I feel like sometimes they talk about people with their first name and then sometimes they talk about them with their last name. And I'm like, who is that? <laughs> but then if you hold the touchpad, you can go and like the lower like little, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's that guy. That's just his first name or that's his last name or whatever. Um, I'm there you go. Going, John yeah, says, real time lore. Exactly. Yep. Um, one thing that I haven't heard anybody else say. So either I'm really dumb or I'm not. And I just haven't seen people say this. I was very confused and I'm going to kind of spoil the demo, but not really. Um, I'm not going to spoil the demo, but this is something from the demo. Um, I did not really realize until I was playing the actual game that the thing. Annabella <laughs> and Benedicta were two different people. Which one's Annabella? The queen? Yeah. No, I knew they because were how people. the first part of the demo ends, and then when you start the second part of the demo, you see Benedicta, and they look a lot alike, unless I'm crazy. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well, a lot of time has passed, so maybe that would explain the different haircut. And it took me a long time before I realized those were two different people. Um, so much so that in the game. I'm like, Benedicta sure is acting weird around Clive. I'm like, or vice versa. I'm like, why is Clive acting like he doesn't know who that is when he definitely should know? I was just very confused. And I yeah. did not realize those were two different people. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. No, I definitely knew they were two different people. Um, okay, but you're the Final Fantasy guy. Yeah. Um, so I guess... I don't even know what this game, because whenever it's like I talk to somebody, then it's time to go on a quest. It goes to the world map and it's like Clive's here and here's the quest and you go click, boom. So unless you're doing yeah. like you're running around doing errands for somebody in a certain area, there is no open or semi-open world, right? You can't like walk from Rosaria to wherever. Or can you? So yes and no it's not very open i originally thought that each one of those little um like pins basically on the map was like a standalone unique location mm -hmm. but there's basically like within rosaria like have you been to like martha's rest yep. i think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so there's like something cliff and Martha's rest and s uh, I can't remember some other places and they all have their own little thing. But within is since they're all within Rosaria, you can basically walk from one to another. They're not all unique locations. Now you can never walk to your, what do they call your, your home base? The thing. hideaway. You can't walk. Yeah. The hideaway. You can't walk from, Rosaria to Dalmechia. But like within that area, there's a bunch of those pins. Yeah. And those are like all those obelisks right. that you like you can fast lock, travel. whatever, yeah. while you're playing. Yeah. So, and they're kind of arranged in the same way too, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, so yes and no. It's not all open, but it's more open than I originally thought. And I guess that's, I wonder if you like it like this, because it's, I did like how they mentioned airships at the beginning about the ruins. And yeah. I was like, oh, so we're going to, but I guess there's not airships, but I just thought that was a nice callback. Um, yeah. I just wonder what you think about it with it being these separate open-ish worlds, what you, if it's what you wanted or not what you wanted, you know what I mean? It's... <sighs> It kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy XII, but also kind of not really. Um, it's it's almost equal parts ten 
and 12 and like 13 and like 13 i didn't really care for because it was very linear and it just seemed like a lot of these like narrow paths that you walk through throughout the whole game and there's a lot of that in this but there's other areas where it opens up more um 12 was very wide open you could fast travel but like everything you could walk from one end of the map to the other if you really wanted okay. to um i definitely like the game and just the like epicness of it all like i don't even want to say the size of it it's not that big i mean i think final fantasy 12 is a bigger game i think the map is bigger um and it feels bigger because you can just walk everywhere um so this game in pure size not time it takes to beat but just the size of the game i feel like it's not that big there's definitely been bigger games um it's beautiful it's fun i really really like it and it's probably going to be i'd say right now it's my number two game of the year i don't yeah. it's not going to go to one <laughs> I could see it dropping down below two, but right now it's number two and I absolutely love it. But it's like my fourth or fifth favorite. I mean, it's still below 12. It's still below 10. It's still below seven. It's right around like seven remake for me right now. Like I still think seven, 10, 12 in some order are my favorite. Um, Seven mainly for the story, 12 mainly for the gameplay and 10 for kind of a combination of the two. I wouldn't put it above any of those, but I really, really like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not my game of the year. I wouldn't say that it's like a 10 out of 10, I don't think, but I'm loving it for what it is. I, I don't know. I guess mm -hmm. it's just hard to play a game. Zelda is one of my favorite games of all time, so it's hard to play this after that. But when you said Epic, I said, because mm -hmm. one of my notes is this game just screams. It, it screams triple A. And Epic is the yeah. word for it. it. It's just like, it does kind of make me want to finally go and watch Game of Thrones, honestly, because I've never watched it. Watching this, I'm just like, man, this is this is just so freaking cool. And like, it's beautiful. So I am playing on performance mode. It does seem like it's, it's a way more, it, it's not a consistent 60 frames all the time, but it's, it's better than it was in the forth. demo. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but I played on Fidelity a lot. Okay. And I didn't really mind the 30 frames. I think I just kind of got used to it. And it just looked beautiful. I'm like, no, this is how I want to play this game. It is beautiful. But then I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I've seen it. I know how beautiful it is. I've experienced it. Let's go back to performance. And then once you see 60 frames again, even though I got used to 30, once you go to 60, it's like, whoa okay yeah and it still looks beautiful but yep. you definitely lose some of the the finer details and stuff but yeah i think i probably end up playing on performance more than fidelity yeah maybe it was about a 50 50 split i played fidelity for the most part in the beginning and then switched to performance for pretty much the second half okay um but yeah the the graphics are amazing the music is amazing there there's definitely some tracks i recognize right even just from seven and I'm sure they're in every Final yeah. Fantasy. Yeah, there's a lot of old music that shows up. The the main like the what I really like the main music in it. It's like the Final Fantasy theme, but like slowed down. Like mm. usually it's do 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 um the uh i keep hearing where is it in martha's rest and maybe other areas of rosaria there's music that keeps reminding me of uh kakariko <clears throat> village oh. so that goes do 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 john's and game this, here so far like, it's do 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 it like does something to it but like those yeah. first like five notes i'm like oh my god that's kakariko village um there's music when you're at the hideaway i think is where i heard it that sounds like the star wars not like the star wars but like uh now i can't think of how it goes but there's a pretty 
famous like <clears throat> oh do 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 i don't know i can't do it now but now you're doing kakariko like, little... again <laughs> <laughs> i know um but yeah the music is pure final fantasy um the boss fights like i was just gonna say fights yes. are just insane like well the one that i, I texted done... you I, the the one i texted yeah. you and then i did the thing after it and that's when there's the jump i'll just say that that was freaking amazing the next one is probably the most epic like i was texting jason it's like straight up god of war maybe bigger than anything god of war really like, maybe not necessarily better but like wow. it's insane well and then the one after that is pretty i mean they're all pretty good but the next one is just ridiculous and i like it so what do you also think about not having a playable party because i don't know if any of the other final fantasies were like that like you're just clive you know yeah, it's different for sure. I don't hate it. It's definitely one of the things that seems less Final Fantasy about it. Um, I loved Crisis Core. And when I heard that you only control Clive in this, I'm like, I'm okay with that because I loved Crisis Core and it was nice to just have to worry about one person. But it's weird. Like, you don't really have to worry about... First of all, there's no magic. I mean, there's magic, but there's no MP in this. You can yeah. use magic all you want. It's just not that good. There's not yeah. really a whole lot of it's more point just in doing ranged. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's weird that like so right off the bat, like half the items are gone because you don't have to worry about items that refill your mag or your yeah, your magic. Um you don't need to worry about Phoenix Downs because you yep. never have a partner that you're trying to like bring back to life. They don't even have health, so you don't need to worry about healing them. Like, they don't have health, but it seems like they're also not that aggressive, is what I found out. I'm like, will you help me? No, like, they're basically I just like, thing. come on. Oh, yeah. They're basically just like a distraction, more yeah. or less. It's like, I'm going to go take this big guy. Hopefully, by the time I'm done with the big guys, you've finished all the little guys. And yeah. Um, And the characters in this, I love. Um, I thought it was obvious when someone from the first couple hours, you know, the demo that you see when they showed back up, I was like, well, that's obviously that person. Like, how do you not know this? And then he just finally realizes it when they're about to kill said person. You know what I mean? At the very beginning, I was like, obviously that's that person. That's uh -oh. that girl. That's Jill. I'll just, it's Jill. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? Um, so I thought that was weird that I recognized her and, and he didn't. Um, but I love the characters in this. I love Clive. I am liking Clive more and more and more as this goes on. I love Clive. I think he's below Cloud mm -hmm. for me. He's better than like any of... As much as I love Final Fantasy XII, I feel like the characters were kind of forgettable for the most part. I just think that game is fun. Yeah. Characters and story, not that great. Um, I think for me, even though a lot of people hate on Titus... I refuse to call him. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, for me, it's Cloud, Clive, Titus right now. So, and do you keep liking him? Like, and now you're at the end, basically. Does yeah, it, cause, just, I mean, he's awesome. Like every decision, like, cause he goes from like, uh, to no, I've, I've got a purpose. And you, after certain things happen, he's carrying on with it and everything. And I'm just, it's awesome. And then like the thing I was asking you, the, and, and never mind. Um, also, his hair is amazing. That's why I said I want to talk about hair. His hair is amazing. I would like to have his hair as well. And it gets even better as the game goes on. I'm like, man, I don't know if a real person could have their hair do that. And if I had my hair like that, I would probably look like ridiculous. But it, it just <laughs> it would not look right. On just, but yes, he does have good hair. I need somebody to Photoshop Clive's hair onto my dumb face. Um, He's so good. Uh, Torgal is the best. Oh, my God. I love Torgal so much. And I, I assume he won't die, but if he does, I'm going to be so freaking pissed off. He is such a good boy. I love that. I, I didn't notice it at first, but if you're just walking around and like things are calm, you can pet him. I didn't, I didn't even notice this. And I was like, Oh my God, I can pet Torgal. This is awesome. I was, there's pet, a trophy for it. There is. Well, I didn't get it. Or do I have to do it a lot? I think you something? have to pet him. I think it's like five times, five okay. or 10 times. I don't remember. So yeah, just, just pet him. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. The the part of the story that I just got to that I texted you, 
It's like, are you sure you want to do this? Cause you can't go back. And I hadn't done any side quests that that's what I was going to say. This doesn't seem like much the RPG and not that this is a bad thing. Again, this is a final fantasy game for me. This doesn't seem like, and I've seen people saying this and I don't even know RPGs, but I know that this doesn't feel like much of an RPG when it comes to like the nitty gritty, like all I'm using my money for my, my gill for is to buy potions. If I feel like I need them before I'm going on a big mission, I don't even, I just, whenever I want to get a new weapon, I'm like, Oh, I just beat that enemy. So now I've got this go to the blacksmith. Ooh, now I can get a, a sword. That's 190 power. Okay, cool. Like it, it's not like you level up as, as you go on. And I'm like level 25 or something now, I think. And you know, your XP goes up and every your I mean, your HP goes up and your attack power goes up and your defense goes up and blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't even remember where yeah, I, was going I with hardly, that. I hardly used oh. any gill. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm not right crazy. Now, basically the, yeah. At the end of the game, like I said, I did like every side quest. I bought some potions, high potions. Um, I maybe bought a weapon or two, but yeah, for the most part, I was just crafting them. I didn't really buy too many. I bought some uh, weapons in the very beginning, like a Gaia blade or something. And then I went to the blacksmith yeah. and I was like, I could have just made this for free with the, the items I have. Son of a bitch. Like, so I'm not buying yeah. any more weapons. Um, I think I ended up like six or 700,000 gill right now. Oh my God. But I have not looked at the trophy list. I'm so waiting until I beat it. Cause 999,999. So a lot of games do that where it's like have yeah. 1 million gill. So I'm so afraid of spending anything. But the other thing is what seems like it's probably going to be a trophy is to get all of the different like songs that you can buy for the little jukebox thing. They're but like 40,000. Like 40, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, I could only buy like 15 of them right now. And it seems like there's more than that. So I'm like, if that is a trophy, that's what I need to spend all of my gill on. And I also yeah. need to make sure, yeah, there's not a trophy for having 1 million gill on you or something. So I haven't really spent much. Once I beat it, I'm just finally going to go look at the trophy list and see what I need to do next, but that's what I was going to say. So I don't, I, I, like I said, I didn't do any of the side quests and then I beat that boss and then what happens happens. And it's like, Oh, those side quests are gone now. Have I lost the platinum already? Or do you not know? Supposedly? No, the plat, the only thing missable is, is that those one things you weapon can that you can get. And yeah, as long as you don't sell. So basically when you're looking at the list of like your items, Mm-hmm. In the yellow at the bottom, they say can be used for crafting, can be used for crafting, right. can be used for crafting. Just to be safe, don't ever sell those and don't sell any weapons. <clears throat> I haven't sold anything. Only sell the things that say something like valuable can be sold for gill or something like that. There's like a different description. Those things you can sell. They're not really worth a whole lot. Like, But it's like if you I find a gemstone sold. in Resident Evil or something. Exactly, yeah. So okay. only sell the things that they say are meant to be sold meant, to, meant be. to be and supposedly that's the only missable trophy so now what i will say since you have to beat it on new game plus and i'm not sure how it treats it there's another oh no see it hasn't even come up yet no i don't think you've no i don't think you've lost out on anything from not doing those side quests not that it's about it i guess that's the other thing going back that it doesn't really feel like much of a jp jrpg as much as it just feels like an awesome action story based action game i didn't feel the need to do any side quests i was like the story is awesome i just want to keep going on the story and i'm leveling up at a pretty good rate i feel like i haven't died yet did did you die at all i think i died four or five times <clears throat> and it was basically all during like boss fights right. and it was usually i was standing next to him just like wailing on him and didn't realize that he was Charging. doing some big yeah. attack that was just like killing me and i didn't even notice it and then all of a sudden i died i'm like what happened oh yeah i guess that move was hurting me and i didn't realize it so that happened a handful of times but okay um where i'm at yeah, i have I, not I died yet. i died five times i yeah. haven't died yet no and i it's... didn't die till pretty late in the game and i'm just playing on normal so i do kind of feel like hey maybe i could beat this on hard mode or whatever in new game plus i don't know i think you can yeah um i think you can i mean i haven't done it yet but i <laughs> right uh, one question I had. I mean, you know... I got the good weapon. Oh, the, so, the thing. Okay. 
Yeah, the the one with it. So I got the one trophy that's supposedly the only missable. Trophy oh, in the game, gotcha. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know what the colors mean for all the different items? Like, there's purple, there's green. Like, is this like a Fortnite thing? I assume like, where it's... things are legendary and whatever. Okay. Yeah, I think gray is just blah. Green is like usually what they call them is like I don't know, standard, normal, whatever for gray. Okay. And then green, I think, would be the next one up, which is like common. And then blue is rare and purple is something. And then yellow or orange is like legendary. That's okay. pretty much all they mean. Okay. But I didn't know. I was like, I was looking at the bottom and stuff. I was like, is there like a legend or something that I'm missing? I don't know. Um, what else? I don't know. I don't know what else to say because th this is something that like the story's just so good and I just want to know. I, I just want to know, but I don't want to know. And I'm so glad that I don't really use mm -hmm. Twitter that much anymore outside of like Wario alerts. So I haven't even had to worry about getting anything spoiled. Um, but man, it is funny. Like you said, both of us were like, we definitely should have seen that coming at the beginning. Like, Duh, how did we miss that? But I guess it's just because we were on blackout, you know. I still don't understand what happened. Will, will I understand what the heck happened? Night, Derek. See you, Derek. I'll, at some point, I'll understand what the heck happened at the beginning, right? Like, what actually... Or do That's you understand? Question. Okay. I mean, in general, they, they explain, like... Well, I mean, I've already had it explained, what happened. but still, like, I don't understand... No, but I mean, it, it gets explained okay. more. Okay, okay. Um... But there's still one question that I can't even say what the question is because I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, but there's yeah. one question that I'm like, but how? Yeah. And I'm like, at this point, it's either not going to be answered or it has been and I missed it. But right. Yeah. Or uh, I think the answer to a lot of my questions are it's not real. And I don't want to spoil anything, but it's just like, oh, that was like a. Uh, hallucination kind of thing. I think that's probably the answer to a lot of the questions that I have right now. Mm -hmm. Or there was a legit explanation and I just missed it. But in my head, it's like, yeah, I guess that was just like a vision, a hallucination or something. And I don't know what that means. But are there any other characters that are in this that are like recurring from other Final Fantasies other than that one? No. I mean, outside of the icons, no. Well, right, right. Yeah. I mean, and the enemies. Night, John. Um, another weird thing, not that it's it's not that weird, but it's just kind of weird that they did it in almost every single Final Fantasy game, going at least back to seven, maybe earlier than that. I don't know. Um, there's these creatures, which you saw in the demo. They've always been called Malboros. Marlboro? M -A -L -B <laughs> Not not Marlboro, just Malboro. Okay. And it's those weird plants with the tentacles and the big yeah. mouth. But in this, they're just called Morble. Right. They changed from M-A-L-B-O-R-O -O to M-O-R-B-O-L. They right. went from Malboro to just Morble, which is weird. I'm like, I don't know why you, <laughs> you sound like you're trying name. to say marble and you're just stupid. Marble. I've got marbles in my mouth. Um, but there's like a lot of enemy like there's a lot of mainstays from previous Final Fantasy games okay. that show up, I'll say. Uh, like, it even happened, I was getting what I thought was pretty close to the end of the game. And I'm like, you know what, I haven't seen a blank yet. And then not much later, I fought one as, like, a boss, basically. So there's a lot of, like, the enemies and the icons and stuff are from previous games. Um a lot of the, if not all of the, as you get new abilities, I really don't want to spoil anything, but I think this is kind of common knowledge. Um, as you get new abilities, some of them are named after things that icons, aeons, summons, whatever you want to call them, used in the past. I'll say okay. that. If you've played far enough in the game, you probably know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, hopefully I didn't spoil anything. Well, but like I've heard the B There's word. a lot of... 
Not not bitch, but like that one, like the I, icon, I, I, the B, the B icon. And oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like even yeah. I know that one. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of callbacks to previous games. Um, but yeah, in the end, none of them are really connected. So, oh, and I did get where I got to because I just walked around a little bit before we started recording. I did get the answer to what I was telling you about the face, because when you talk to Taria after it you know in the new place he's like oh thanks and she's like eh, it's the scalpel oh yeah yeah I was like okay that that makes sense so it is what I thought happened but I'm like damn that's cold that that had to that had to hurt like hell um mm-hmm. it's very cutscene heavy too which I love but I think I think I saw somebody said there's like 10 hours of cutscenes in this and I'm like hell yeah but I guess some people don't like that I freaking love it it's like Metal Gear meets so, Final Fantasy without the Kojima I craziness. Got, I got to the point where I started skipping basically all of the side quest cutscenes. I'm like, you want me to go to this area and like pick this flower? Okay, I'll go do it. I don't care why. I don't care why what you're going to do with it. I don't care. Just It's skip, not story skip, skip. related. Oh, go there and grab the flower? Yeah. Okay, I'll go grab the flower. So I skipped a lot of that and probably saved many hours gotcha but yeah it is very cutscene heavy um but yeah it took me 35 hours and hopefully i'm about 30 minutes away from beating it at this point that's awesome um is there anything we didn't cover everything all my notes are mostly story stuff which obviously i don't want to talk about yeah the playable opening is awesome Cinematic dodges and strikes. I think we talked about that last week. Uh, yeah, and then everything else. The, again, the boss there fights. as many oh of those God. as I would have thought. I feel but, like the demo kind of made it seem like they were going to be pretty frequent. Oh, yeah, yeah, they okay. R- they rarely happen outside of icon fights, honestly. I kind of thought there'd be more, yeah. but I mean, it's fine. And I love the, uh, this doesn't mean anything if you haven't played it, but just going in there, the Hall of Ancestors was beautiful. That's when you're I'm trying to figure out what that even was. You're following the hood. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then the when yep. you go into the 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 end of like Act One, I guess I would say that whole place and seeing the big thing, it like I was like, this is just gorgeous. I cannot believe there's not a photo mode, and if there is, I just don't know how to activate it because I was looking at that place right before. I don't think those, there is one right before those boss fights. And I was like, this is absolutely like breathtakingly beautiful. It is awesome. That that was one thing again, not spoilery at all, but this game very much reminded not in one sense, this game reminded me a lot of tears of the kingdom because throughout the game, there's all these random ruins that look like Mm -hmm. they basically just fell from the sky. sky. Yep. And they look a lot like, the ruins from tears of the kingdom. Yeah. Like they look very similar, like architecture, whatever you want to call it. And yeah. I just thought that was very odd. Is there anything we didn't cover without spoilers? Um, no, I'm curious to talk to you more about it offline when we can yeah. talk. Well, I can't talk spoilers because I don't want to spoil anything for you, but you right. can talk spoilers. Well, I would um, love it if I can beat it over this next week and then we just do a, a spoiler cast as an extra episode or something. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to have enough yeah. time to do it. I, I probably won't, but how, even you know, whenever how many I beat hours, it, how long have you been playing? 10, I think. I, I think I'm okay. at like eight or nine in the main game, and then I put two hours plus the time I had to do again in the main game you know the the two hour opening and then like an hour and a half that i had to replay in the main game so are you thinking you're gonna at least try the platinum if i haven't missed anything i I guess so yeah no you haven't missed anything yet and i'm not gonna then i would suggest when you it'll be obvious you'll be like oh that's what he's talking about when you get a fourth kind of like currency kind of thing um, I would say starting at that point, start doing all the side quests. Okay. And even if it's not 100% necessary, because it may be something you could avoid doing that and clean up in your new game plus, 
A, I don't know if you can. B, you're probably not going to want to because you're probably just going to want to mainline New Game Plus yeah. and get through it as quickly as possible. And you know, so I would just take the time and do all the cuts, uh, all the cutscenes, all the side quests. Side quests. Okay. Um, for the most part, they're pretty short. Um, towards the end, they hit a little bit longer, and you get multiple like available at once to where i'm like running around the hideaway i'm like okay start this one go talk to this guy all right start that one all right go talk to that person start that one talk to this person start that one and then i just look at the map and be like okay there's some actions here there's some actions here and then i just start going all over the place and just knocking them all out um but before like the last two really even the last one like set of side quests that all become available at once they're all very manageable they're pretty short and there's never more than like a few that you have to worry about you know at any given time but towards the end like basically right before the final boss the last set of side quests you can do there's like i don't know 10 or 15 of them there was a Holy lot crap okay and yeah, and at that point, I'm just like, I'm just activating them all, and then I'm just going and just, all right, go here, kill that guy. Okay, go here, pick that flower. Okay, go here, talk to that person. I'll talk to that person. Okay, sure. I'm like, I don't even know what side quests these actions are related to, but it's just, it was too much for me. But yeah, you're going to have to, I would suggest if you want to do the platinum, do all the side quests. Okay. And until the end of the game, they're not bad at all. Okay. Sweet. Well, that's Final Fantasy 16. We love it so far. Uh, I would definitely say it's number two for me right now. I think um, it's definitely not number one. I, and and at this point, there's there's nothing that's going to beat Zelda. Spoiler alert for the end of the year. I, I just can't see it happen. There's yeah. no way Spider Man's going to be better. There's no way. Like I don't know what else is coming out. Um, I'm probably not going to play Starfield. Like, yeah, Final Fantasy 16 is awesome. Oh gosh, sorry. Oh. But Sean, you know what else yes. was awesome? What? What, Kevin? Our one news item of the week. I'm not going to do the because we're remote and I, I just don't feel like doing it. But we've only got one item on the news list and it was freaking awesome. Although I've heard some people were down on it and I'm like, wow, what else could you want? But Let's talk yeah. about that surprise Nintendo Direct that honestly going into this, dude, I had no expectations at all. I was like, this is going to be a normal Nintendo Direct. They're going to show Pikmin for probably 20 minutes. That's awesome. It's not for me. There's probably not going to be anything else in here for me. They're probably going to announce stuff that's already been announced and just put dates on it. They did that. But then there were some announcements in here that I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. So they started it out with something that made me think that my previous thoughts were going to be correct. And that was that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet um, are getting DLC called area zero coming out this fall. Don't care. Just I, whenever I see these games, now, I'm like, man, you, you guys can't even like the Pokemon company, whoever at game freak, how can you not make games that actually look good and run well? Like this is, th these are not, like the fact that they don't look good and they still don't run well and it had all these issues at launch. I'm just like, what is wrong with you people? So that was that. I know you don't care. Then we get another trailer for Sonic Stu Superstars. Superstars. That would be awesome. Um, still just saying fall 2023. I still love it. It looks awesome. But it has leaked that it looks like this is coming out. I can't remember if this was confirmed. I don't think so. But it looks like it's coming out October 17th, which is crazy because three days after that, a couple games come out that we're going to be very busy with. So I'll leave it right there for now. Uh, then they showed Palia or Palia or something. It's out this holiday. I don't care. It's a free to play adventure sim. Nobody cares. Persona five Tactica got another trailer. And at this point I'm just like, yep. Okay. I'm just, I'm just going to keep doing my work because this sucks. Then they show myth first, this myth force. This actually looked kind of cool. It's a first person. This looks awesome. First person roguelike inspired by Saturday morning cartoons with four player online co-op. It's out this year. I was like, this is one of those games where the art style, I'm like, I don't know how they did this. This looks so cool. Yeah, you know? it looks, it looks awesome. Like this is one, again, I don't really want to play it on the switch, but like right. if this comes out on like PS five, I'm all about it. I think it looks so cool. And I even don't, if it's not fun, it just yeah. looks fun. I don't know. It could be fun and not even be fun, but first person roguelike is pretty interesting to me, I would say. But this was the first game that I was like, oh, okay, now you've got my attention. 
Um, and then my attention dropped off right after this because Splatoon 3 is getting a splat fest the weekend of July 14th with which flavor of ice cream is best. And somebody said, it's weird that they didn't do chocolate ice cream. And then somebody was like, well, do you really want to be spraying shit all over the, the board? And I'm like, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's probably why they didn't do chocolate. Cause it would look like you're just spraying diarrhea everywhere. Um, and then Detective Pikachu Returns was announced coming out October 6th. This looked like a PS2 game. This I saw this and I was like, oh my God, this looks... Graphics are not everything. I know that. But this this looked bad. Was like, there a Detective Pikachu game before there was the movie? I don't think so, but you're asking the wrong person. I mean, yeah. But I don't. I don't think there was. But then... The announcement happens and I see the opening graphics. And I'm like, huh, that looks familiar. Me being an idiot. Everybody that knew was like, oh my God, they're doing this. They announced a Super Mario RP. At first I thought it was gonna be Super Mario RPG 2, but it's Super Mario RPG remake. And it's out this year. It's out November 17th. What the hell went through your mind when you saw this? I know you texted me and said, holy shit or something, but like, I don't, yeah, I've never assume, even I mean, played this game. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. I don't remember how it all started, but either when they showed, you know, Peach sitting there or the music, the do, 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 do. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. And it looks amazing. It is like they're staying very, very faithful, it seems. Like this is basically getting the Link's Awakening treatment, I would say. Like, it seems like it is the exact same game, the exact same, you know, isometric perspective, the exact same controls, the exact same everything uh, with, like, a couple new, like, prettier, you know, cutscene type things, obviously. But, like, it seems like it's very faithful. I, I can't wait. There you, you go. need to play this. I know you're not big on turn-based games, but this is awesome. So James says in the chat, Detective Pikachu was a DS game first. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm not a turn-based guy. And like I told you when this was happening, I was like, I'm finally going to play and beat a turn-based game. I'm going to do it. And especially this game is pretty easy from what I hear, right? Like yeah. my dumb ass can beat this game. So I, I, I've, I've always wanted to play Super Mario RPG. And now I'm going to play it. Like I just, I, I like right now, I don't think there's anything coming out in November that I care about. Um, because Spider-Man's October, something else is in October. Sonic might be October. If I play Assassin's Creed Mirage, that's October. Uh, that's a- yeah, something else is October. Yeah, I know. We're going to get to it. Same day as Spider-Man. <laughs> I know. I know. That's what I, I am aware. We'll get to it. But yeah, <laughs> this game just looks, it looks so freaking good. Um, Super Mario RPG 2 would have been cool, but like, who cares? Like, the, the fact that like, the Switch just won't die. It's not going to die. Like I, I, I'm to the point now where I still think they're going to announce hardware or tease it or something at this live event that they're doing. But now that a certain other game got announced as well as this one, there's going to be stuff to play that's coming out soon. And maybe that's why they're doing the live event and they're not going to do hardware. And maybe it is going to be a whole year before we actually get the switch to or whatever, but man, Nintendo just, uh, they can do no wrong. It, it is amazing. Um, so then we get a tease that princess peach is getting her own game and it's out next year. All we see is a tiny bit of gameplay, like 10 seconds or something. And she's kind of just walking around. So I don't know if it's going to be, I I didn't even know this was a thing, but there was super princess peach or some super princess peach adventures or something came out on the DS or something in like Oh five. That was the only game she ever got and her power ups because it was, you know, a different time were like her emotions and, because that's what women do. They just, they're emotional. So of course that's going to be her power-ups. Um, good Lord. Oh, wow. But I don't know. People were pointing out that it looks kind of like, you know, like a stage play kind of a thing. So maybe there's some Mario three inspiration yeah. there. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a platform or what, but I'm definitely interested. What do you think? I'm definitely interested too. I like that. It's, you know, set up like a play it's giving me, even though it probably won't play like it, it's kind of giving me paper Mario. Yeah. At least, thousand year door vibes because the battle scenes in those all take place on a stage and there's people in the crowd and you had to get them to interact and like 
it, it kind of I'm sure it has nothing to do with Paper Mario. It didn't look like Paper Mario, but I am definitely intrigued. Did either of y'all play Paper Mario on Switch? Did you get it on Switch? I can't remember. Yeah, that was the one with like the rings. Oh, that was the ring one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Sean played yeah. that. I, I saw the I beat it. I liked it. It was good, but I just I just want Thousand Year Door. I saw the uh I saw the the battle system for it with the twisting rings and stuff, and I was like, nope, I can't even do turn base. There's no <laughs> way I'm gonna add in twisting rings and stuff into this as well. Uh and then we get another tease for a game coming out next year, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, which was originally on 3DS, which it basically it's Luigi's Mansion 2. So it's getting a remake or a remaster. It's out next year. I've never played the Luigi's Mansion games, but good on them. Also, if we can remaster 3DS games, where yep. <laughs> is my Link Between Worlds HD? It's got it's going to happen. That was what. I've never played any of the Luigi Mansion games, but just seeing, I'm like, they're remaking a 3DS game on the Switch. There's hope. Yep. It it, it could happen. Yep. And this is this November is the 10 year anniversary. Obviously, it's not coming out because Mario RPG remake is coming out then. But you know, whatever. That's all I care about. Uh, then Arkham Trilogy is coming to Switch this fall, and I gotta say, Asylum and City, I can see them running on the Switch regardless of my thoughts on Arkham Knight as a whole, that game was breathtakingly beautiful eight years ago. I cannot picture that game running on switch. I just can't. I, I, I know it will. They'll probably just knock the resolution down, whatever. Um, but it just boggles my mind that that's going to be playable on switch. But I mean, I've already bought all these games before. I'm not going to get them on switch, but if you haven't played them for some reason and you have a switch, it, it's money well spent. I assume it'll be 60 bucks money well spent for sure. Uh, Gloomhaven. It's been out on PC for a while. It's a tactical card based game based on a board game and it's coming out September 18th to consoles and it's coming out to every console. Then we got a trailer for just dance 2024. And I was very happy because that gave me time to go pee. So then I went pee and I came back and it was still going. Uh, and then we got a trailer for a game called Silent Hope. It's an action RPG where nobody can talk. It's out October 3rd. Cool. It looked kind of cool. It did look cool. The next I mean, thing, other than like the heavy hitters. Yeah. It's probably number two for me behind that myth force. Yep. Uh, and then we got a trailer again for Fay Farm. And I'm just like, oh, God, please just no. Uh, then we got a trailer for Hot Wheels Unleashed to Turbocharge, and I just looked. I just wrote down here. Oh my god, this looks so much fun! It's out October nineteenth. I thought w- wasn't two out already. Isn't that the one that reviewed so well, or is that the first one? I think it was just the first one. Man, this looks so much fun. I, I still miss you, you know the old school micro machines and stuff. And obviously, this is a much different uh, racing game, although it's the same kind of idea. But, um. Wait, okay, so Peach goes on a quest to recover the Vibe Scepter. What the frick? That's not... (laughs) Are you serious? And she recalls it bringing her mom lots of joy over the years. This isn't even made up. It's 100% canon. I'll post it in the Discord. What the... So Princess Peach is trying to find a vibrator that her mom liked? (laughs) They really did this to Peach? Oh my god. Nintendo, you're supposed to be family friendly. The Vibe Scepter? Oh my God, James, you have blown my freaking mind. What the hell? Okay. Uh, Then we got a trailer for Manic Mechanics. And I said, this is overcooked, but you're fixing cars. It's out July 13th. Uh, Sparks of Hope got its second DLC, which is out now. And a demo of the main game is available as well. Dragon Quest Monsters, the Dark Prince was announced coming out December 1st. Sean, anything? Nah. I just want Dragon Quest 12 or whatever's next. Yeah. Pikmin 4 got another trailer. It's got a cute dog. There is a demo coming June 28th. James, I know you're excited. You are you were also excited about this and good for you on your video. Uh, Pikmin 1 and 2 remastered were announced and shadow dropped out on Switch right now. Um, so that's awesome. Pikmin, I've just never gotten into it. I would probably like it if I did, I guess. Um, but I know people are pumped. 
Uh, and then this next one is for me. We got another trailer for the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection, along with a bunch of new information. It was so funny that they put this on a Nintendo stream and not the PlayStation or the Xbox stream, is what I thought. But yeah. Uh, so Metal Gear Solid digital graphic novels are going to be included. There's screenplay books and strategy guides. There's a digital soundtrack. There's uh, there's something else that I didn't write down. Now I can't remember what it is, but it's out October 24th. You will also be able to buy Metal Gear Solids one through three separately. Um, and they did confirm that Metal Gear Solid two and three are going to be the HD collection versions, which apparently some people are not happy about. But I am because that that means it's going to be, you know, 1080p, whatever. It's going to have the controllable camera for three, which is all I was worried about. I'm so excited for this. And it's 60 bucks. And some people are mad about that. I'm like, you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. I know four of them are MSX or NES games, but just Metal Gear Solid one through three for 60 bucks. Are you kidding me? We're really going to complain about that now. Really? And now you will be able to play them forever once you own it. Because we're not going to have to worry about backwards compatibility issues ever again. Like, I have no problem with this. I will be buying it day one. I probably won't play it day one, but it will be there and I cannot wait. What do you think about the extra information we got? Uh, I mean, that's cool. I still don't know if I'm going to get it, but me. I'm happy for the people that are happy for it. One thing a lot of people are happy about is that Vampire Survivors is coming to Switch with four-player co-op. It's out August 17th. This looks so much damn fun. I still have not played it on mobile. Um, this might be fun to do some Let's Plays of. Because I assume this is only going to be like 10, 20 yeah. bucks, something like that. I don't, or maybe it'll still be free to play. I, I doubt it, but... Yeah, I like the idea of co-op. I think that could be pretty fun. Then we get a trailer for Headbangers Rhythm Royale. And I was like, this is really a real game. And yep, it's a rhythm pigeon battle royale game. And it's out on Halloween, of course. What the hell is happening? We're, we've gone overboard with battle royales. Then we get a trailer for a new game, uh, Penny's Big Breakaway. Coming out early next year, it's a 3D platformer from the Sonic Mania development team. When I saw that, I was like, oh, Okay. You have my you have my interest. And there's like a character and then it's got a yo-yo. It seems interesting. What did you think about Penny's big breakaway? Uh, for some reason, I'm having a hard time remembering this. So either I somehow missed it or it didn't really do it for me. But maybe I tuned out for a little bit after the Headbangers <laughs> Battle Royale. Uh, next up, we got a trailer that Mario Kart 8's Wave 5 of DLC is out this summer. I just want to know when Mario Kart 9 is actually going to come out. And I don't know. It'll never. It, it won't be on this Switch. Um, and then this was probably my game of the show, other than the big hitter. Star Ocean Second Story R was confirmed. It's out November 2nd. Holy crap, this looks awesome. This looks so freaking good. This art style, the fact that it's an action RPG, I may have to check this out. And I think this is coming out for everything. I don't think it's just on Switch. But what did you think of this show? And obviously, it leaked before. But now we got the confirmation it's real and it's out this November. Yeah, I'm pretty intrigued by it. I had never, I mean, I know of Star Ocean. I don't know about this game in particular, but I, I love the, it's kind of the HD 2D mm -hmm. whatever kind of vibe to it. And yeah, it looks pretty sweet. I definitely keeping an eye on it. Yep. I think it looks awesome. Uh, then we got a trailer. There's a new WarioWare game coming out called Move It, and people are like going, chuk, 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 chuk. and I was like, there's no way in hell am I buying this. Nope, don't care. Do you care? Did you ever care about WarioWare? I've never played any of them. I never played any of them, but I remember I've played like WarioWare esque games, like on probably on the iPhone or like on like flash games in a browser maybe way back when or something with all the little micro games and i mean they're kind mm -hmm. of fun but I, I, it's nothing i need to spend money on james says he doesn't think i would like pikmin but it could be fun to do a let's play the game is broken up into days and each day is only like 15 or 20 minutes hmm. okay again I, I like that it's got a dog or a, a pick dog mm -hmm. or whatever it would be but yeah uh then we get a trailer for the nintendo live 2023 thing 
And then they talk about Tears of the Kingdom, and I really got my hopes up. But all they did was announce the Amiibo that have already leaked for Zelda and Ganondorf coming out this holiday. Yeah, I'm probably going to buy both of those, just because. But no DLC. I, now I'm to the point where I'm like, I, I mean, I know it only came out like a month and a half ago, or a month ago, not really. Or no, it was the 12th, so a month and a half ago. But I don't know that we're going to get DLC, but we'll see. And then they I said... But wait, we've got one more thing. And I saw the flower and I was like, okay. And then it zooms out and that fat mustachioed plumber runs out on screen. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Are you kidding me? We're getting for the first time in a decade, a new side-scrolling Mario game. That is not a new Super Mario game. And let me say, I had no issues with the new Super Mario games. We had so much fun playing them on this channel. I didn't have an issue with the art style. Some people hate it, whatever. I like the Dancing Koopas, all that. I love this art style too. Some people don't like it. This game could have, it could have just been 8-bit Pixel Mario from Mario Odyssey, and I would not care. We're getting a new 2D Mario game, and I cannot believe it. Um... So it's called Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I don't like the name. That's the only thing I will say. It should just be Super Mario Wonder. But then I heard on a podcast, somebody was saying, it is weird how all the 2D Marios end in brother, brothers. All the 3D Marios are Super Mario something. Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario oh, yeah. Galaxy, Super Mario Odyssey. And I'm like, huh. So maybe they're just saying that brothers means it's 2D. 2D. I'm like, whatever. I don't know. Um, you get the Wonder Flower, which changes the levels. You can have the, the pipes are doing this or everything's crazy. Um, there is up to four player co-op at the same time. Yes. Thank you, God. By the way, I tweeted it. Mario Mondays are coming back. I cannot freaking wait to play through this game. Yep. Oh, my God. Um, there's the, the four main playable characters, but you also get uh, Daisy is playable. Uh, who else? There was somebody else in there that was playable, right? Who am I missing? Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, Toad, Daisy. I thought there was somebody else. I think else. there's a couple Toads or like Toadette or something. Yeah. Um, and as Sean was alluding to earlier, it's out October 20th, the same freaking day as Spider-Man. Are you kidding me? And potentially three days after Sonic Superstars. Are you kidding me? And then the trailer ends with Mario getting an elephant power up. And I'm like... <laughs> What is happening? This is amazing. We don't know what his power is other than he, he like kicks a Goomba or something. I can't remember. And the flower goes, yeah, well, that's interesting or whatever he says. And then the trailer <laughs> ends. Um, what are your thoughts, Sean, on our first new 2D Mario game in 10 freaking years since new Super Mario U? What were you thinking? Other than Mario RPG remake, which we got and a thousand year door remake that will probably never happen. This is about the best news for me for a new Mario game. I, I don't care what you could have come up with for a new 3D game. I don't care if it was Galaxy 3, Odyssey 2, something brand new. Like, this is way better than any of those could have possibly been. I can't wait. I think the art style is interesting. It almost seems like they're just like we can only make a 2D game look so good. Like, new Super Mario U, or even just like Mario Maker, like, new Super Mario in Mario Maker 2, or Mario 3D World in Mario Maker 2, like, you can't really make a 2D game look much better than that. So it's yeah. almost like, what else can we do to just make it stand out? And like, I feel like the animations look... Like usually Mario's just like <laughs> and just like running and jump and run and jump. And this he's got like all sorts of like weird like mm -hmm. I don't I don't even know how to describe it, but um I I can't wait. I'm I'm so excited for this game. Yeah, I I'm was excited blown. for Mario Mondays. Yeah, I'm excited because I'm definitely gonna get this game and I know Kira, my older daughter, is gonna want to play it. And yeah, I can't wait. Yep. When I told the boys that this was coming, they were like, oh my God, are you serious? Another Mario? I'm like, hell yeah, dude. We can all play at the same time and throw each other off of cliffs. It's going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> I This is another reason I'm glad I'm not on Twitter 
because apparently there were rumors everywhere that Mario RPG remake was coming. And there were also rumors about a new 2d Mario. So I'm so glad that I had no idea about either of those. And it was just like, I, I was shocked by both of them. Um, I mean, I'm still on Twitter, but mostly it's for sports stuff now, not games. I don't know why, but anyways, um, overall, as I'm going through this, there was a lot of stuff I did not care about, but the stuff I do care about makes this the best that this was better than the Xbox show. But, it was better than the PlayStation show. Yeah, I mean, that's, show. that's how it is with any show. Right. I mean, you're never going to have a show where you like everything. You're probably never going to have a show where you like even half of it. Right. This is pretty par for the course as far as 75% of it I couldn't care less about. But the 25%, the 25% that I do care about is a lot better than like, the five percent that we've been getting from Sony lately. Yeah. So I think it's the best show of the year. Hands down. Like I don't think it's even close. I don't think it's close either. I, I think I would say Xbox is number two, PlayStation is number three. Um I just I, I, I like I said, there there was stuff in here that I never would have thought was going to happen. And again, I'm glad I didn't know that there was rumors about them happening. Oh gosh, sorry. Um <laughs> i was trying to like can i get through this before the yawn finishes um it was just amazing it it just made me so happy like i even told jess as soon as she got home i was like oh my god they're doing a new 2d mario i, I can't i can't believe this is real like i really thought if we got a mario announcement it was going to be 3d but i also thought they're going to save the 3d game for the switch too and it seems like that's probably what's going to happen it, not like it's going to be pack in or anything of course but um yeah it, it was the show gets an a for me period i would give the xbox show a b like i said the playstation show was like a d or an f other than the metal gear solid remake announcement um so yeah it was amazing uh, I, I i couldn't have asked for anything more i mean i could ask for zelda dlc but that's i've got enough to play right now anyways but that is it for the news item sean so let's go through the wrap up first speaking of nintendo ubisoft ceo eves gilmont who sounds like Guillermo del Toro, uh, said that they should have listened to Nintendo about not releasing uh, Mario plus Rabbids 2 Sparks of Hope until the next console came out. I'm sure Nintendo was really happy that he said that. So this thing is happening. It's got to be happening in the next year. It's got to be, right? The, if they, they wouldn't tell him to hold it for like two or three years, it's got to be out next I year. I would think so. Yeah. <sighs> Tears of the Kingdom is already the number two selling game in the U.S. this year based only on physical sales. Because remember, for the Circana report, which used to be NPD, um, they only track physical sales for Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't, doesn't give them access to physical, to digital sales. So obviously, it's the number one selling game if you count everything in the U.S., um, beating Hogwarts Legacy. But as of right now, it's number two. And obviously, it was number one for me. That's obvious. Um, we got a whole bunch of updates about, and I don't even know if I've got everything in here because there was so much coming out from this Xbox and FTC hearing, but here are some of the highlights I got. This could have been its own news item, but it's just, it's just negative stuff. And I really, I just want them to push the, push the stupid thing through so we can move on. But some of the highlights are this Microsoft claims that they have quote, lost the console wars and have been losing to PlayStation and Nintendo ever since 2001. Funny thing is the FTC then said in some document, they're like, yeah, actually, no, you won the Xbox 360 PS3 generation. So nice try. And I was like, well, I mean, technically they didn't. Technically PlayStation ended up winning, but for the vast, vast majority of that, of that generation, they were winning. So I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Xbox had only 16% of all consoles sold in 2021 and only 21% of the install base. I guess I believe so what, that. What does that mean? Install base. All actively being used consoles. So like Switch, that would have been Switch, PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X is what I assume that means. It doesn't count PC, obviously, but that means only 16 of active consoles or 21% of active consoles being used were Xboxes. Okay. When you think that Switch has now sold 125 million, yeah, I get it. And the PS4 sold 100 something million. So, yeah, I get it. Uh, Pete Hines confirmed that there was a deal before the Xbox acquisition that would have made Indiana Jones available on multiple consoles. However, the deal was amended after the acquisition. 
Thanks. So it's now been confirmed that the Machine Games Xbox uh, indie game is officially an Xbox exclusive, which we assumed it was going to be. It's just kind of annoying to find out from Pete Hines himself that it was going to be on everything. Well, not every. It was going to be on PlayStation, and but now it's not. Uh, Pete also said that Starfield would not be out this soon if it was also coming to PS5 because focusing on fewer consoles helped the team. And I'm like, you've been developing this for 10 years. How, how many more years did you need, really? Uh, came out that Xbox, Xbox, Xbox bought Bethesda because Sony wanted Starfield as an exclusive. Wow. Just wow. Oh, you want this as an exclusive? We'll, we'll buy the company. <laughs> but that's Microsoft money right there. There's nothing Sony can do about that. Apparently, Activision, uh, before the Xbox Series consoles released, Activision was demanding a bigger share to put Call of Duty on Xbox, or they were just going to go to PlayStation. And the FTC meant, mentioned, which should have been redacted, I think somebody said, that it was like an 80-20 revenue split going to Activision. Instead of normally it's 70-30 going to Xbox, it's now 80-20 going to Activision. Just to keep Call wow. of Duty on Xbox. Uh, Project Dragon is listed as being an Xbox exclusive, and this is IO Interactive's fantasy RPG, their new IP that they're doing. So it looks like that will be exclusive to Xbox. That's fine. Sony does all kinds of, you know, third-party uh, exclusives, so it is what it is, and I, that's not something I'm going to miss. Uh, it came out that Microsoft paid $117 million for Ninja Theory when they acquired them back in 2019, I think it was. I think that's a good deal. That's nothing. Yeah, that's pocket change for them but now i mean hellblade 2 has got to actually be a game not a bunch of cutscenes, and it's got to actually come out at some point but that's not very much uh microsoft also explored buying <laughs> sega supergiant the developer of hades niantic the developer of pokemon go zynga bungie io interactive and others microsoft was going to buy sega or they were looking into it like dude come on also, Matt Booty said an email, and this got misquoted at first of like, there was an email in 2019 where Matt Booty said that MS could, quote, spend Sony out of business. But when this was first reported, people were making it seem like this was related to them buying Activision and like it came out last year when this was happening. And that's not true. A Xbox does enough bad stuff. You don't have to fake the story. But still, the fact that they said, yeah, we can spend Sony out of business. I mean, it, it, it they bought Bethesda for $3 billion or nine seven. I mean, million, even if they didn't say that, I mean, it's true. I mean, everybody knows yes. that's true. And it's just them admitting to it. Because no matter how much these companies try to act like they're friends with each other and it's like, oh, congratulations on releasing whatever game. Yeah, we're happy for you. No, you're not. You want to beat them. It's like WWF bought out WC... What was that? Uh, so next up, uh, Pete Hines also said in an email that he was caught off guard uh, when he found out that from a press release that Activision get, some Activision games were still going to come to PlayStation after the acquisition because that's the opposite of what Bethesda was told when they had their acquisition. Uh, Jim, Ryan's, Jim Ryan's also said that if the ABK acquisition goes through, Sony won't give any details of the PS6 to Activision Blizzard King because they don't want Microsoft to know about it. And also, uh, Elder Scrolls Elder Scrolls 6 is still five plus years away, and they have not decided on exclusivity for it, according to Phil Spencer. Yeah, right. Um, why did they announce this game? three, four years ago when they announced Starfield, if it's still five, like. That's insane. So it's interesting seeing all this stuff come out, but I'm still so sick of it. I just, it's going to end up going through. Yeah. Like, let's just move on with our lives. IGN had a report that Perfect Dark is still about two to three years away and it could be an episodic release. It's been in development since all the way back in 2018, but there has been little meaningful progress made on it since its reveal in 2020. Wow. That's not good. I mean, it's I don't not care. care. But that's, that's bad. And this was one of the few like reveals that I remember when they showed that in 2020, I was like, Oh my God, perfect dark. I've never played perfect dark, but even just seeing that, I was like, Oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> Uh, there's an ID at, oh, wait, sorry. No series X is increasing in price in markets outside the U S to be the same as the PS five price. Um, 
So remember, everybody made a big deal when the PS5 went up in price. I hope they're making a big deal of the Series X going up in price as well. Uh, Game Pass Ultimate is increasing everywhere by $2. Uh, Game Pass Ultimate, $2 on July 6th. Regular Game Pass is increasing a dollar. It is funny because everybody's been report or like wondering the last few months, like Game Pass is going to go up in price. Oh my God, what's it going to be? Two bucks. Like, <laughs> Like that, that'll end up being a lot of revenue for them because you go two bucks times 40 million or whatever people are on it. Like, but it's not a big deal if you actually use it. Uh, ID at Xbox is having a indie show confirmed for July 11th. Looks like Metal Gear Solid, the Master Collection Volume 2 uh, has leaked already based on website data that some people were able to find. And it looks like it will include Metal Gear Solid 4, Peace Walker, and the Phantom Pain. Sweet. It's finally going to be playable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get it. I mean, well, no. I don't need to buy five <laughs> again. I don't need to buy five again. I can still play five. Um, Peace Walker, I can't play. but So I'll probably buy it unless I can buy them individually. It, it just depends on what you get the extra stuff and all that. But yeah. Uh, Google is reportedly testing a product that will allow you to play video games via YouTube. They had Stadia and it didn't work. I was going to say, we're going back to this whole streaming video games thing again. Also, that was supposed to be a feature on Stadia that never ended up happening. Was playing game. Remember, you're supposed to be able to watch a game on YouTube and say, I want to watch somebody and then just drop in. Nope. So yeah, good luck with that, Google. Uh, Immortals of Avium has been delayed one month to August to be able to, quote, realize the full vision for the game. Fort Solace or Solace, the deep space like adventure game starring Troy Baker. It's coming out August 22nd to PlayStation and PC. Quake 2 Remastered has been rated in Korea. So obviously that game's real. It's coming. It's pretty cool. Dead Cells is getting a native PS5 version this month, and it will be a free upgrade if you own the PS4 version, so that's awesome. Looks like E3 2024 and 2025 have been canceled, according to the LA Tourism Board website, but the ESA has said no decisions have been made. It, it should be canceled. Like there, there's no it's point. We, we've seen yeah. this year. We don't need it. We, we don't need it. Uh, Gorilla has added a Lance Reddick Memorial in Horizon Forbidden West, quote, to commemorate the proud the profound impact he had on us all end quote i've seen some pictures of this it's awesome it's just i i still can't believe he died um yeah just way way too soon and as derek said in the chat earlier switch online got some updates for genesis and they are revenge of shinobi ghouls and ghosts land stalker and freaking crusade of senti crusader of senti um this is the game that you've heard us talk about a lot on this channel and we've played on the channel before it's basically the Genesis's uh, answer to a link to the past. And it's freaking awesome. And the cart itself, like just by the cart, not even unopened or anything like that is like 600 bucks on eBay. Now you can play this game on the Genesis mini two, and you can play it on your friggin' switch as well. So I, I love when games like that, it sucks for people that own it and they're like, son of a bitch. Cause it's going to drive the price down obviously, but it's That's awesome that people, people should play this game. If they haven't, it's freaking awesome. It is amazing. That is it for this episode of the two player co-op podcast. Thank you all so much for being here. We should be back next week, but until that time, show one, go ahead and take us out. Thank you for playing.